and welcome to the Arctic Light Sweater Knit Along. I am so, so excited to host my first ever knit along or cal, as we say in knitting lingo. Um, I'm so excited to see you here because in this video, this is going to be part one of three videos where I'm going to show you step by step how to knit the Arctic Light Sweater which obviously I should be wearing right now, but I am in Portugal filming this, but I didn't pack my Arctic light sweater with me three weeks ago when I came here because I didn't know I was gonna do this whole challenge or project. Um, so I'm wearing the wishbone sweater, but I will show you how the Arctic light sweater looks here <laughs> with some nice pretty imagery. Um, the Arctic light sweater is knitted from top down. It has lots of intricate, beautiful cables. It's super fun to knit and it has a raglan shaping and everything is done seamlessly. Uh, so there's no sewing at the end. Now, if you've never participated in a knit along before, a knit along essentially means that a group, a group, <laughs> a group of knitters uh, get together and decide to knit either the same project or a project maybe from the same knit designer or you decide the rules essentially, and then they will knit that project uh, at the same time uh, together and then share inspiration and photos and progress, status updates and all that fun stuff. So I'm really, really excited about this. And I have made a chat group for us in Ravelry. So Ravelry is where you can get the pattern. You can download the pattern for the Arctic Light sweater because you need that to follow along this knit along. So I will put the links in the description below, but they can be found at ravelry.com slash stores slash kutobakika. And under there you will be able to find both the pattern and I will also put the link to the little group form. In this first part of this video, I am going to give you an overall like introduction of the Arctic Light sweater. Um, and then in this part one, I'm going to essentially be showing you exactly how to do the neck opening and the yoke. So we're gonna go through all of the cables that are in the pattern. And in the pattern, you'll also see what you need for this one. It's knitted with one strand of DK weight merino and one strand of silk mohair. My colors, I'm so, so excited. I have chosen to work with Double Sunday, which is also the original sweater is maybe Double Sunday, but you can choose any DK weight yarn. It really doesn't have to be this one. I know, for example, Cascade, I think is pretty big in the US. Um, so Double Sunday has approximately 108 meters in per 50 grams, per 50 grams. Um, so for example, Cascade has a wool it has like 200 meters per 100 grams, so that would be perfect. And then it's optional to pair that with a silk mohair. Also, Drops has lots of um, DK weights. I mean, most yarn brands carry a DK weight yarn. It's really, if you go to a yarn shop, um, if you really don't know, you can ask them for advice, but otherwise you can um, Google DK weight yarn and see that it has around like 100 meters per 50 grams. This is 108, so it could be, I think, like plus minus 20 meters, I think will be totally fine. And then you can choose to pair it with a silk mohair. Um, I've also done two other ones, or I didn't knit them, but I had sample knitters knit them of the Arctic Light sweater. And this yellow one is knitted with Saye wool, um, a super wash yarn, also DK weight and then silk mohair. And then this other sample was knitted with Isager yarns, silk mohair, and then also with the double sundae. So there's lots of different ones to choose. You could also choose uh, knitting for olive, the heavy merino. I think this one has 125 meters uh, per 50 gram, but totally would work and pair that with a silk mohair. All right. But that's, uh, so yeah, you can substitute the yarn with whatever you'd like, but of course, it's always good to do a little gauge swatch to see that you will get the correct gauge. Now, I would say I am a fairly relaxed knitter. So if you knit very tightly, you might have to go up maybe half a size in needles. This one is knitted with five millimeter. So that's a US eight needle. So I would recommend to do a little gauge swatch. Um, here the gauge is for the actual pattern. Um, you'll see in the pattern it says, um, like, I think it's 22 stitches um, 
equals 10 centimeters or four inches of chart A. So those are all the cables. For my second sample, or this is gonna be the fourth sample of my Arctic Light sweater, but I've only knitted one because the two other samples were knitted by sample knitters. I am choosing this, it's like a bluish grayish tone, and then I am pairing it with the silk mohair that is a little bit more blue. So they're not actually exactly the same tone, but I think that's gonna be nice because that will create a little bit of sheen, a little bit of like, I don't think it's gonna be super marl, but also here you can see this wishbone sweater I've knitted um, with also double sundae and then paired that with a silk mohair that was lighter. And you can see, or I don't know if you can see on the camera, it creates like a really nice effect. Um, so that's something to think about. And also with cable knits, I prefer, or I will often choose a lighter color just because that will allow the cables to really pop and really shine and look really textured and nice. Obviously that's a design choice, an aesthetic choice. If you want to instead go with a really dark color, that could also be really cool, where the cables will be more subtle. All right, I think that is everything I want to say about the pattern. The link is in the description. Let's start to knit along. All right, we're gonna begin by casting on stitches for the neck opening. So you need your yarns, you need a three millimeter. I usually use a 40 to 60 centimeter long cable, circular needle for this. And you'll also need a little stitch marker. All right, let's begin casting on stitches for the neck opening. So I'm going to be using the backward loop method because we're gonna attach the collar double and sew it in on the wrong side of the Arctic Light sweater. So you want to choose a cast on method that is pretty loose and I just find that the backward loop cast on method is very good for this. So you just do a slip knot and then you start casting on stitches by just using your thumb like this. And I am going to knit this sweater in size small so I need 104 stitches and I'm not casting on I'm not being this like super tight I want it to actually be pretty loose because that is going to make sure that my neck opening or my collar is gonna not be too tight all right now I have 104 stitches so then you want to join to work in the round so this is always a little bit of a tricky part just make sure all the stitches aren't twisted like so, go through them. Maybe have to twist them a little bit, like that. And then you want to have your stitch marker ready to go. And just gonna pop that onto this the right needle. So I've placed my beginning of round marker here, and then we're gonna start with twisted ribs. So I'm going to be knitting one through the back loop. So instead of going here, through the front. I am knitting this from the back, so twisted. And then I just purl one. And I repeat. And it's always the first round that is a little bit tricky, and that's why you also don't want to make too tight when you cast on. Then you just continue this for 28 rounds or until the work measures around 11 centimeters, so that's four point 25 inches. So until that you're gonna work in this twisted rib and then we're gonna continue for the yoke part. All right, I have now completed the knit opening rib. So I did 28 rounds of uh, knit one through the back loop, purl one. Um, so you want it to be approximately 11 centimeters. That's 4.25 inches so that we can then fold it double. But next we're gonna start with the actual yoke pattern. And for this, I definitely recommend that you print the charts out in your size. So I've printed the charts out in my size. Our printer here in Portugal is not great, but it will do the job definitely. And maybe even have like some markers or some post-it notes that will help you keep track of on which round you are. For this next section, I'm going to be showing each of the different cables um, that are in the pattern. So if there's a specific cable that you want to check out, I recommend to check out the chapter features. So in the description below, I will put each of the different cables so you can click to that point immediately if you don't want to see all of them, if there's just one specific one that you're wondering about. For this next part, you're also going to be needing seven stitch markers. I like to use them in different colors or two of each. So two, 
well, I have two red ones, two of these green ones, two beige ones, and one gold one. Um, and I just like that because it makes it visually easier to see where I am in my knitting. So uh, every little visual help you can give yourself to prevent mistakes, I think is something that I recommend and I recommend that you do that as well, even though totally not uh, necessary. All right, but now we're gonna start with first placing our markers. Before changing to the 5mm US8 needle, we're going to be placing our stitch markers where we're gonna have the raglan seams. So according to the pattern, I need to place the first stitch marker 24 stitches from the beginning of round marker. So I will just count 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 and 24. So this is where my first stitch marker will go. So in the pattern that is noted as PM, so place marker. And then I have seven, two, four, six, seven, and I place a second marker. And these stitches from the beginning of the round to these first set of markers, this is going to be the back. Then I continue, so I place the marker, then I count 14 stitches, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, place another marker, then I count seven again. This is going to be the raglan seam, little lace, or not lace, cable thing. And then I do the same for the front and for the second sleeve. So this is going to be the first sleeve and then just count here again, 24, 22, 24. And if everything has done correctly, there should be seven stitches here. And there you have the beginning of round marker. So now we are ready to start with the charts. I'm going to be switching to a five millimeter, uh, 40 to 60 centimeter cable. Now, later on, I will probably switch to a five millimeter longer cable when I have more stitches. But for now, I will start to work with my five millimeter cable here. All right, let's begin working round one chart A. So first I'm just going to follow the chart A here. So I need to purl one, knit one through the back loop, just knit one, knit one through the back loop. And here on this first round we don't do any increases yet. And now when we come to the marker we slip that marker and here for these next seven stitches we're gonna work chart B. So chart B is knit one through the back loop, Purl one, knit three, purl one, knit one through the back loop, and then you slip that marker. All right, for the next section, we're gonna work chart C. So here we just start by purling two, and then I just knit all the stitches until the last two stitches and then I need to purl those. Now there's only two more stitches before my marker, so I purl those. And then I slip the marker and here I work chart B again, chart A and chart C. On round one, you don't do any increases, but after round one, as you will see in the chart, you increase on each row and it always happens where you have your markers. So here I've now worked approximately 20 rows and you can see here that at my Fraglan markers, I've increased here and also then here and here. So I'll next show you how to do those increases. Every time you see this symbol, it means make one left. And you will do this every time at the start of your chart. So you'll have your marker. And then on the left side of your marker, you will make one left. And you do this by taking your left needle and you locate the strand here between the stitches. So this little strand here. And with the left needle, you go in from the front and then you'll knit this through the back. So it becomes twisted and like that you've made one left. So it's a left leaning increase. And just to uh, make sure, because sometimes um, you can be tempted to knit this from the front, but if you do that, you'll see that there's a big hole appearing and we don't want that. So once you've taken your left needle from the front to the back, make sure that you knit it twisted. So you knit it through the back loop there in order to create this twist. So you don't get that big hole there. 
So just make sure to remember. So every time you take your needle from the front, you have to then knit this stitch from the back. So this is make one left. Make one right. All right, so each time you come to the left end of your chart, you'll see this symbol, which means make one right. So it's a right leaning increase. And this one you do before your marker. So here again, you locate the strand that is between your stitches. So this strand here, look at that one. And then now with your left needle, instead of going from the front, we go through the back. So from the back, we grab that strand onto our left needle and then this time we knit this but through the front again because we want it again to, oh, to twist like this. So you can see now that the strand that we picked up from between is twisted because otherwise if we would knit it just like this, you see that there's this big hole appearing. We don't want that so you take your left needle from the back to the front and then you knit it from the front. For all of the raglan seams in this sweater, you will follow chart B. And in chart B is fairly simple. There's this one little quirky thing that is called the three stitch pass over and yarn over. And I'm going to show you this symbol. So otherwise chart B is fairly simple. You do knit one through the back loop, purl one and now I am on the row where I do need to do my three stitch pass over and yarn over. So what you do is with the right needle I will take the third stitch so one two three and I will pass this stitch over the first and second stitch like that and then I have these two stitches and I'm going to knit the first one then I do a yarn over, which basically just means that I bring this yarn that is in the back around from the front to the back and then I knit this stitch. So I again have three stitches and then I just purl one, knit one and that's it. In chart A you have this cable and I'm going to show you each of the steps to make this cable. So the first symbol we're going to tackle is the one called 1 slash 1 slash 1 LPT which stands for left purl twist. So this symbol says transfer two stitches onto a double pointed needle. So when you come to this place you're going to work these next three stitches. So first you grab your double pointed needle and you just slip these two onto the double pointed needle and then you keep them in the front. Then this stitch, the third stitch, gonna knit through the back loop. And then from the double pointed needle, the last stitch, so the purl stitch, this one we're gonna transfer onto our left needle. Still leave that first stitch on the DPN. Then we purl this stitch. And then lastly, from the double pointed needle, gonna knit that through the back loop. And there you have it. So these stitches have now each crossed each other. Let me purl these two stitches. You can see it a little bit better. So there you have it. These have now crossed each other. So this is twisting to the left. 1-1 one, one RPT. So that's right purl twist. So again we're gonna use the double pointed needle. We're gonna slip this first stitch, which is a purl stitch, and keep that in the back of the work. So you want to put that stitch and keep back of the work. And then you knit this through the back loop. And then purl the stitch that you just transferred onto the double pointed needle. So now this twisted knit stitch has moved one stitch over to the right. Next let's do one one LPT so that's a left purl twist. So again grab the double pointed needle or a cable needle, transfer this knit stitch onto the needle and now keep in front of the work. Then purl this stitch, the next stitch, like that. And then knit the stitch from the double pointed needle through the back loop so that it's twisted. 
and you can see that now this twisted knit stitch has moved one over to the left. In the Arctic Light sweater, we make a three stitch bubble. So when you reach the place where you need to make a bubble, you first knit that stitch through the front. Then you knit it that same stitch from the back loop. So you've now done two stitches into the same stitch and then you knit it through the front loop once more. So in that same stitch, you've now knitted three stitches and then you can let it go from the left needle. Then you turn your whole work. So you turn around and then the three stitches you just made, you're going to purl. So we purl one, two and three. And then turn the work around again. And then you knit this first stitch and then you knit these two next stitches together from the front loops like this. And then the last step is to slip or pass this first stitch that you knitted over the two stitches you just knitted together and you made one bobble and you can tighten it a little bit. Then you purl that next stitch and you can just make sure that it's looking nice and good there on the needle. So in chart A, you have this big, really nice braid or cable in the middle, and it consists of 12 stitches. So first let's do the 4-4 LC, which means that it's a left-leaning cross. So grab your double-pointed needle, and you're going to be transferring four stitches onto this double-pointed needle purl-wise. So meaning that you take the stitch like this onto transfer the stitch onto the needle this double pointed needle purl wise and then you keep them in front of the work and then these next stitches you knit them one two three and four and then you will knit the four stitches from the double pointed needle one two three and four. And now you can see that these four stitches have crossed over to the left. And then you'll continue three rounds. And then on the next round, after three rounds, you're going to here instead do a right cross. Four by four RC. So that's a four by four right cross. So again, this is worked over the next eight stitches. So you'll need your double pointed needle and we're going to transfer four stitches onto the double pointed needle three and four and then this we move to the back so you have to get your right needle and the yarn in front of those stitches and then next we knit four stitches so knit these four two three and four and then we'll knit the stitches from the double pointed needle uh, like this and knit these four stitches so one two three and four and now you've done your four by four right cross and you can see this really nice braid starting to form this next cable repeats both in chart A and in chart B, so both on the sleeves and on the front and back, and it spans across 10 stitches. So the symbol for this is 2-3-RC and 2-3-LC. So first let's do the 2-3-RC. So here first you're going to need again your double pointed needle and you transfer three stitches onto the double pointed needle and you keep behind the work. So let's do that. So transfer one, two, and three, three stitches, and then we move those to the back of the work. So you have to get your yarn here, ooh, like this. So you have those three stitches there in the back and make sure that your yarn here isn't behind these stitches, but you take it here from the front. And then we're gonna knit two stitches and then knit the three stitches from the double pointed needle that you have here in the back. So one, two, and three. And there you can see that it's now twisting towards the right. Two, three, LC. So now we want to do a left cross. 
So again, using the double pointed needle, I'm going to this time transfer two stitches onto the double pointed needle. And I'm going to keep this now in the front of the work. And then I am going to knit three stitches from here. One, two, three. And then knit the two stitches that I have here in the front of the work on my double pointed needle. And there you have it. So now you've done a 2-3 RC and a 2-3 LC. So a right cross and a left cross. And when you repeat this, this is the kind of cable you'll get. Now it's of course upside down, but it creates this nice V shape. All right, next up, the four by three LC. So that's the four by three left cross. So this is essentially a ribbed twist or a ribbed uh, cable. So we want to do this left cross. So it crosses to the left. So again, for this, you're gonna need a cable needle or the double pointed needle. And first start by transferring four stitches onto the double pointed needle. So one, two, three, and four. Then we keep this in front of the work. And then here from my left needle, I'm going to knit this through the back loop, purl one, and knit this through the back loop. And then from my double pointed needle, I take the fourth stitch, so my last stitch here to the left, and I transfer that onto my left needle. So that last stitch, keep the three others still on that double pointed needle. Then I purl that stitch that I just transferred. And then lastly, then from beginning from the right, so that's the first stitch they have on the double pointed needle, then I knit that through the back loop, purl one, and knit one through the back loop. And there I have it. Now I've done my left cross, and this is actually also the cable that is used for the wishbone sweater. So if you've been thinking about maybe trying that out, this is exactly the kind of cable that that consists of. Four by three RC. So this time we want to do our ribbed cable, make it twist to the right, so right cross. So transfer first four stitches onto our double pointed needle and we're gonna have them then in the back. So I'm gonna just do it through here. So I transfer one, two, three, and four. Keep those behind your work and make sure that your yarn here is in front of those stitches. And then gonna knit through the back loop. Then I purl and knit through the back loop. And then now again, the fourth stitch that is here on my double pointed needle. So that's the last stitch, the one that is most to the left. I transfer that onto my left needle, my left working needle. So I transfer that, but I leave the three remaining stitches on my double pointed needle for a while. And then I purl this stitch that I just transferred onto my left needle, purl that. And then I work these three stitches from the right to the left. So I grab those and then I knit one through the back loop, purl one and knit one through the back loop. And now these ribbed stitches cross to the right. I've now been working on my Arctic Light sweater and this is as far as I've come. So now you essentially, you just, you know all the cables, you know how to do the increases. So just follow the charts. I like to, whenever I've finished one round, I use a marker and then I swipe over that marker. So I know which round I am on next. That just feels for me safer, so I know where I am. And then you just have to follow chart B, but that's pretty easy, pretty quickly learn to see when that three stitch Passover comes. Um, and then you follow the chart. And I'm still, for this uh, episode, I'm gonna show you how to attach the color double, because I find it really nice to attach it double already at this point, even though the pattern says officially that you do it in the end, which of course you can also wait until the end, but I like to do it at this point because then I can try it on. So in the next episode, we're gonna separate four 
the sleeves and for the body. And it's just nice before you do that to be able to put all the stitches on a stitch wire and then you can try it on. So then it's just nice that you have your color already folded. So that's the last thing that I'm going to show you. I'm gonna show you how to sew the color double. So before you want to try it out, maybe it's nice to just have that double. You can also knit this together in the beginning, but I won't show you that. So I'm just going to be using a blunt tapestry needle. And then first we can just use this yarn that is left from when we cast on stitches. So I'm just gonna thread my yarn onto this blunt tapestry needle. So when I start here, I want to be really mindful that I fold it straight. And then you can see here where the line from the rib and when the pattern starts. So I want to attach it in stitches here, just where the rib sort of ends and where the pattern starts. And then I just go through it and I sew it quite loosely. So I don't want to tighten it too much because I don't want to have a really tight neckline. And to make it a little easier, of course, you can fold this the other way so you can see better. <laughs> And I don't necessarily go in through like every single stitch, but every second or so I find is totally fine. All right, now I've sewed the entire collar. So let's see how it looks. All right, that is it for part one of this knit along. Obviously, this is a tutorial that you can watch at any time, but if you'd like to join the Ravelry little chat group, uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Also, there you can find the link to download this pattern for the Arctic Light. I'd love also to see your work over on Instagram. You can use the hashtag Arctic Light Sweater, or you can also always use the hashtag Knit with Kika, uh, and you can tag me so I can come and see what kind of colors you're using, and we can chat in the Ravelry group. If you have any questions, I can help you. Other knitters can help you. So I just hope this is going to be a really supportive and nice community and a nice project that we can all work on in February and March. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I will see you in part two of this and happy knitting. Bye.